Good morning. It is a new moon in Capricorn today, and I thought I'd do a quick reading. Also, the first day that I go into the classroom with a couple groups of students. So maybe my students will come into this reading. If, it, if you do, I'll share this with you. But let's just see what the moon has to tell us here from the Queen of the Moon Oracle deck. Now, I don't know a lot about astrology, but I'm learning. I know enough to um, do some basic tarot reading of your signs, but now I'm studying the effects of planets and the moon and different angles in the sky and how astrologers are reading those to predict some of the really chaotic and rebellious events that are happening right now in our history. So let's see, the card for today is the hot moon of extremes. <laughs> Isn't that funny? I was just talking about rebellion. So let's see, number 34. That actually goes beautifully with what Ham Gregory, an astrologer I like to follow, has said that um, we're going to find ourselves intractable in this time, that we're going to be firm in our ideologies and unable to understand the other side. But let's see what the extremes advice is here. Learn how to handle crises with calm and resilience. Seeking balance is superior to seeking extremes. There are better ways to handle conflict than rage and outrage. There may be someone who seeks to disrupt your business or life in some way. This too shall pass. I handle ex extremes with grace, yet I seek balance in all things. The hot moon challenges us to build our resilience and reserves of wisdom and calm for those times where things are at their extreme. It reminds us that developing grace under pressure is worth, is worth its weight in gold, and that even the, these extremes in time will pass. All right, well, I'd be lying if I, didn't, if I uh, pretended that doesn't make me wonder if something might happen in class today. Um, I have had students uh, probably QAnon followers, I realize now, uh, bring in all kinds of really uh, crazy information into my classes. Um, I have been trolled by the right. Um, so every new semester, I wonder what will happen. But a new moon is really about making wishes and that theoretically the, the heavens are actually more open to our wishes on the new moon. This might have something to do with the earth, the moon, and the sun being lined up together. And we see the moon and the sun conjunct, which is a friendly relationship. Full moon, they're, they're in opposition. Okay, so I'm gonna just pull some cards here for what we are releasing, what we're embracing, what's hidden influences around us that we might want to know about, and finally, the future. So we are embracing, I mean, we are releasing the emperor, uh, symbol of masculine power, of structural power, the emperor. We are embracing the two of pentacles. This is a card about seeking balance. Interesting, isn't it, that we just, I mean, that goes beautifully with our extremes here, right? We see that perhaps we could see but we need to release this sort of authoritarian, um, certain, masculine, um, not always uh, bad, but in this case, we're wanting to release this um, for balance here. That's exactly what the Oracle wanted us to consider. Hidden influences, the Three of Swords. This is a card about having a sense of betrayal, heartbreak, the very painful, experience of that. A uh, three can sometimes mean that there's a third party situation. Um, in this larger sense, what we want to do is we want to look inward, look about around us and see how pain, suffering, grief as a result of a feeling of betrayal, true or not, 
or maybe driving those around us were driving us today. And that seems certainly true in the political sense because there's a large number of people in this country who um, feel betrayed by our system. Um, and you can take that in many ways. And the future is just a simple new start with the Page of Pentacles. Um, being grounded, um, having an idea that you can bring into, the rea into reality, just a simple, small start, a young start. I always think of young people, my students, when I see a page, because this is, these are the young people in the tarot. All right, so let's clarify this here. Uh, so we're going to be releasing the emperor. I'm going to use Klimt here, and we've been given three cards here. Um, we get uh, the Queen of Wands, the, the drama queen of the deck here. She seems very much luxurious, elite. So I'm seeing cards of the elite. I also see the King of Cups here. He's the deep feeler. Um, she's very passionate. Uh, they're great characters, um, but they are kings and queens with the emperor. Um, she very much about willpower and passion. He very sensitive and emotional, although doesn't talk about his feelings. And thirdly, we get the five of swords. This is the card of self-harm. It's also the card of getting things done in a way that is harmful, where we may regret how we went about getting things done. Uh, so my read on this has to do with perhaps a structural political reading that we might look at. I need to release our big structural ideas about power, uh, about um, the kings and queens and the emperor. Um, we see willpower at play. We see drama. We see hidden emotions. But I think very importantly, we see how Doing things the wrong way makes us emotional. This is a very vulnerable, I mean, not emotional, vulnerable. This is a very vulnerable position to be in naked, seen from the rear view. Um, you know, for me, that is my most feared uh, vulnerability would be naked from the rear view. Uh, and I think this card brings across very well also that she's one, sort of looking over at how you have caught her out doing something in the wrong way. So releasing that and embracing this two of pentacles, which asks us to consider balancing, uh, getting calm, calmer seas here. Seeking a middle ground perhaps. Okay, so we get with her, we get the Eight of Cups. This is a card of there's lack of fulfillment and, and we need to leave for another more emotionally fulfilling situation. We get the Two of Pentacles again. Uh, this shows us an elder feeding both of her children. They're different children, but she's feeding them equally. There is a caretaking piece here that is added to our understanding of the two of pentacles and finally and i keep getting this in this position of what we need to embrace we get the king of swords the philosopher king he is a deep thinker he is would represent aquarius which is the age that we're in and many of the planets are in aquarius um, and so as we consider and i want to note point out that both of these figures the figure of the aid of cups, which is the lack of emotional fulfillment, and the king of swords here, they're both in that thinking position. They're both in a mode of reflecting on how to achieve this balance, um, how to seek a place of more fulfilling, more egalitarian um, uh, system, perhaps, uh, and that the king, you know, he's just resting on his sword. He's um, using his mind instead of his weapon. The sword reminds us of the air. It reminds us of blood, the sanguine, um, really the ideal temperament 
and the science behind tarot uh, for, uh, I don't know, making a balanced, just society. Okay, so the Three of Swords, uh, we get an ending here. This is the world card. This is um, a woman who, who's about to give birth. And so when we have the end of one identity and moving into another from a, a woman and who does, is not a mother into the identity of a mother here. So we see the end of one life and the beginning of another. And of course, we're clarifying this extremely painful looking Three of Swords experience. So endings are something that we grieve um, and they are also opportunities to move, move into the next phase. Um, secondly, we get the Four of Wands. This is stability. This is everything out in the open. Um, this is a joyful communal celebration, celebratory card. And here we have, um, I think nicely, we see moving from this pregnant uh, end of the one life and the beginning of motherhood to a mother with a child. Uh, so it's a kind of new beginning that, that we're seeing here. And it's a, in the Terra, the Four of Wands is one of the most ideal beginnings. So this is in our background. The Four of Wands is um, you with your soulmate, you with your best friends, out in the open again, honest, um, and very stable as well. And then we get another king, the king of pentacles. He is the 3D king. He's Mr. Security, Mr. Wealth. Uh, so we definitely see him still holding on to his wealth here. Remember, we are looking at releasing the emperor and these monarchs here. Um, and a practice we can see of getting things in the wrong way, through the wrong means and harmful way, either to ourselves or others. And, you know, probably harming others, we should always consider that that ultimately hurts us as well. Um, inequality is harmful to the oppressor as well as the oppressed. Um, so personally, I have a great deal at stake in bringing social justice into the world, not just as a woman and as a gay person, um, but also as a white person or a person who is identified as white. That for me, a just society, uh, my soul depends on that. And really, I don't like to live in an unjust society. So if I'm looking at this broken heart, this three of swords, and we see an ending, uh, we see the beginning of a four of wands, I do think that this king of pentacles represents what is ending this old masculinist society. Um, it may also feel that this stable, maternal, the security that is needed to protect this life is threatened. I think there's a great deal of anxiety happening um, around us because there's so much violence, there's so much five of swords happening around us um, because there seems to be a kind of last gasp of white supremacy, of patriarchy and misogyny. You know, the old world is going away. As we see in the future, we have this youth-driven new world that, that we can see as being created. So let's find out a little bit more about this future. And, I, and notice this person is balancing on one leg. This is a very hard posture in yoga, the tree pose. Um, I usually end up wobbly um, unless I'm just very grounded and focused. Um, and so this, we're keeping in mind that we want to stay out of extremes and stay moderate and balanced. So this produces this, this future, this young person holding this new idea, this pentacle. Remember this guy is holding the pentacle um, and is having trouble letting go of it here. Okay, we also see that passionate Knight of Wands riding in uh, with his great creative ideas, all of his willpower here. So another adolescent teenager uh, figure. We get the sun in the future. This is the card of absolute ultimate happiness and joy. 
uh, the kind of nakedness in the world that is free. It is, um, remember this vulnerability where I've done something wrong? This is a kind of nakedness. Yes, we're seeing him from behind, but he is in this sweet embrace with this true love. Um, this reminds us again that there is this hidden possibility of the Four of Wands here. Um, so that is a great future we're riding into here with the Knight of Wands. And definitely shows in the Six of Swords, this is in the intellect and the ideas that we have movement from an old philosophy into a new one that is certainly heralded by our Page of Wands with their great balance, this kind of non-binary person in a tree pose here. So the future, riding in here quickly, like the Knight of Wands, he's fast, he is full of willpower, um, he's sometimes considered like the player knight, so he's like the fun knight, um, he might not be a great might not, not be great at monogamy, <laughs> or she, it's a gender in tarot is really about all of us have masculine and feminine and the kind of balance of that. Um, yeah, but this, this future, this new philosophy that we see um, sailing in um, on the Six of Swords is one that brings us together in a scene of total beautiful wish fulfillment. Um, and security um, in our most naked um, and intimate moments here. And I see that repeatedly in what we are being suggested to embrace is this loving, nurturing quality of, of that causes balance where everybody gets fed equally, um, that is based in a deep philosophy informed by history, by having seen a lot and having thoughtfully um, considered how we're going to move from unfulfillment towards a journey here. This is always the beginning of a journey towards a more fulfilling society. I see this one as being about balance. Um, we are seeing loss. We're seeing people who are, um, and perhaps we, are also struggling with fear, anxiety, loss, grief of the world that is ending and uncertainty about the new world that is being birthed. Um, it looks like a stable, loving world that we are going into, but we also need to notice that it is these, the security people, the ones that are usually the status quo, that have um, and want to hold on to what they have, even if it ends up being harmful to the rest of society, and therefore to their their well-being, right? But that we're moving into a future of a new philosophy, of complete and total fulfillment. It's coming in fast, and it is definitely grounded in young people, passionate people who have the will for this new philosophy and this sun-filled joy that is our future. So that is my wish, actually, here today on this Capricorn new moon, uh, that we see that future come in and that um, I believe, and why not, that um, the, what I put out there, the energy I put out there, the vision that I am a part of constructing and advocating for, that putting my energy in that direction, it just might actually take us there if, I'm, if enough of us put our energy that way in both spiritual and practical ways. This is definitely a practical journey that we are on. So the hope here to move out of extremes and into balance and into the sun. Have a beautiful new moon in Capricorn, my friends. Okay.